Week number two of the Pomp and Pony podcast. This week we have a man who's in the Motorsports of America Hall of Fame, Chip Ganassi from Chip Ganassi Racing. It is Daytona 500 week, and we have a lot of good stuff to talk about with Chip Ganassi. This thing drops on Friday. You can get it kdk.com, 937fan.com, or any place you get your podcasts. Right now we're going uh, back to the lines. I believe we have Nick who joins us. Hey, Nick, how you doing? I'm doing good, Bob. Thank you for taking my call. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks, Bob and Chris. I have a question. Why do you guys think that Rutherford decided to leave? And the reason why I'm asking the question, because it kind of relates to why did they bring in these two particular guys, Hextall and Burke? What do they represent that's different as far as a direction is concerned? Yeah, Chris, we've debated that. I still don't have a firm answer on it, other than obviously there was a disagreement. Uh, but they only took two weeks to hire these two, which is Very fast when you think about it. I think Nick is hinting at or at least suggesting with his question the way I'm going to answer this, actually. Uh, And I think that you could at least infer, we don't know, so we can only speculate, at least infer that maybe the Penguins brass realize that they're going to have to try to rebuild and retool sooner rather than later. And Rutherford said, what? Absolutely not. Because they brought in Hextall, and he's a builder. And then the Burke thing almost gets stapled on a couple days, you know, two days ago, whatever it is, because Mario Lemieux on a whim maybe says, hey, we can bring this guy in. He'll be good with the corporate sponsors, et cetera. We're going to need to make money again when the pandemic is finally fully under control. Uh, I think it's pretty pretty clear if you want to be a speculator that Jim Rutherford thought win, win, win right now, do whatever I've got to do, empty it all out, and the Penguins are starting to ease away from that mindset. And Burke also is very good with the media, is not afraid to meet with the media, say anything, and back it up, or at least challenge people. And Hextall is just very much uncomfortable in those situations. So he can take that responsibility away from Ron Hextall as well. But I think it is very interesting. They do want to, they say they want to keep winning and try to win, but they're also, and Hextall said it a number of times yesterday, that he has a, an eye on the future. And he should have an eye on the future because ultimately that future is going to get here. And I think all teams that think about that in advance when you're supposed to, you can, you can uh, you know, kind of lessen the impact of going from very good to very bad. And that happens a lot in sports. So we'll see. Let's go to Bill real quick, who joins us on line two. What's up, Bill? How you doing? Hey, guys. How are you? Good. Thanks. Hey, real quick, I, I just thought one of the, uh, the surprising things about the Super Bowl was how the media never covered the Britt Reed story here. And I wanted to get your thoughts on that because, You know, that never was talked about, and it looks like he's kind of getting a pass here. What's your thoughts on if they find out if he was drinking at the facility Mm. around that stadium and caused an accident? I mean, how detrimental is it to Andy Reid's career? Because this guy has had trouble with his family. It just seems like football's the only thing. Well, he was. Britt Reid's a grown man, though. Like, to me, it's not. And he was put, by the way, on administrative leave. Just so you know, he was put on administrative leave. If he was, I don't think we, by the way, like gave it a pass here. We're in Pittsburgh. I think we mentioned it, but I'll tell you this quickly. If he was, if they find out he was drinking at the facility before this happened, that's how the Chiefs get sued for this. That's what matters here, because if they find that out and that actually happened, the Chiefs are very much uh, on the hook for this more than they otherwise would be. But uh, it's an ugly story. It is. And, And here's the thing. Maybe why it didn't get as much coverage as you would have liked is because at the time they haven't come up with a, a police report on it yet. It's just speculation. It's, you know, what the report indicated at first, and that's it. There's not much else to go about. And you don't legally want to put yourself in a position of commenting about something that you really don't know yet. And we're out of time on that note. Chris, thanks as always. We'll see you again coming up next week. And that's going to do it for our program here tonight. Thanks for joining us back on the air tomorrow at 1035. Get your calls in early. We'll take them right here on the Ireland Contracting Night Sports.